Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, here in, in Kazan, in Tatarstan. Uh, I would like to thank uh, both uh, uh, Times Higher Education team and the uh, Kazan uh, Federal University for having organized uh, such a wonderful uh, event. Well, I, I would like to start with uh, some uh, information about uh, our university. Atılım University is established in Ankara, Turkey in 1996 as a non-profit private university. We so far have eight schools uh, within the university. These are, as mentioned there, engineering, law, management, arts and letters, architecture and design, civil aviation, and quite recently, Health Sciences and the Medical School, which we shall start uh, next year. We, are, uh, we have also uh, graduate schools for uh, graduate education, PhD and uh, master's degrees. A metal forming center of excellence, which is unique in uh, Turkey. The, uh, we are quite proud of this uh, center of excellence, and uh, we have many collaborations with uh, both Turkish firms and uh, firms, uh, international firms, uh, in the sense of research in, in our center. We are also proud about our rankings in the Times Higher Education. We were in the top 500 in the year 2016. Uh, as for the young universities uh, under 50 years of age, we were uh, among the top 100 in 2017. And in the physical sciences ranking, we were in the top 400, again, worldwide in 2017. And I should maybe add a line to this. We are 19th uh, in the Eura Eurasia uh, ranking announced last uh, evening. So for a 20 years or 22 years uh, old university, I uh, find this quite an achievement. Now let us talk about uh, uh, our main topic, uh, the one Belt, One Road, or the Silk Road Economic Belt uh, Initiative of China. Well, uh, Silk Road starting from China uh, up to uh, coming up to Turkey, throughout the uh, whole uh, Central Asia, South Asia, and then going up to Venice, uh, was once the main uh, trade road uh, on the world. We still have in, in Turkey many uh, hotels, we call them Han actually in, in Turkish, the dating of uh, the Silk Road uh, times, and uh, we can see still the traces of the uh, Silk Road culture uh, within Turkey. So uh, during those times, before the Industrial Revolution, as was mentioned uh, this morning, uh, I think by uh, one of the uh, presenters, uh, those countries were quite uh, prosperous. This trade uh, contributed to the wealth of the uh, countries on the road. But uh, I think, think many of us, all, all of us, we missed the Industrial uh, Revolution so that the center of gravity of the world uh, shifted from east towards west. Now, uh, again, there is a somehow counter shift this time uh, with the rise of countries uh, in the region, the economic rise of the countries in the region. Uh, the center of gravity again has started to shift towards East. Now we call emerging uh, economies or BRICS countries, and these countries are uh, uh, at least the three or four of them uh, are in the uh, Eurasia region Russia, India, China. To these, we may, of course, add Turkey, uh, Iran, Pakistan, and uh, many others uh, which are uh, coming all the what we may call Turkic countries in the region, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, and uh, others. Uh, so uh, I think that this initiative of China is very important to uh, somehow renew this uh, old uh, cultural and uh, commercial uh, trade or relationship or collaboration between the countries. But the world has changed. Uh, in those times, it was the silk. 
the, the main good that was in a way exchanged that came from China to, to Europe uh, through the Silk Road and that's why the name of Silk Road. I will make a change in this world. I, I use in the, you know, the uh, abbreviations are uh, co very popular uh, nowadays. So I will uh, make a, uh, or use this silk for uh, S for science, I for innovation, L for learning and K for knowledge. Now that is what we have to share uh, among the countries on the Silk Road. And I hope that this initiative will help to share uh, science and innovation and learning and knowledge uh, among the uh, countries on the Silk Road. But to be uh, able to do this, we need more. Now, in that respect, we may take the example of the uh, European Union. Now, uh, I remember the name of the European Union was common market when I was a child. We were always hearing of a common market established for only economic reasons. But only economic belt or economic collaboration, e economic activities uh, did not suffice. Then Europe wanted to be, uh, to be a unity, to unify the countries, to uh, somehow unify the cultures. Well, in, uh, along the Silk Road, we have many cultures, many religions, uh, many differences. But I can assure you that similar differences also exist or existed in Europe. Uh, nobody can claim that the cultural difference b between, say, uh, Greek, uh, Greece and uh, or Lithuania or uh, Swede are much less than the cultural differences between, say, China and uh, Ukraine or, or uh, Russia. We have um, uh, all those religious differences or others, many things uh, common coming from, the, uh, from a very long uh, history. So therefore, we may perhaps organize in the same way as the European Union did. We may start a Bologna process. And uh, this is rather a call to the policymakers and to the leaders of the countries on the Silk Road. Let us start by forming uh, some sort of a Bologna process. Let us try to unify our education systems. Let us uh, work on the recognition of degrees. Let us uh, establish the mobility of the uh, students. Let us fund research pro projects together. Individual uh, initiatives are okay. So uh, throughout these two days, uh, we've heard about many uh, collaborations, uh, but, but most of them bilateral co uh, collaborations uh, established by uh, the universities uh, by their own efforts. But uh, to establish a more structural platform, uh, similar to Erasmus program, similar to the Bologna process, which will foster the uh, recognition of degrees uh, among uh, the Silk Road countries, the mobility of students, student, uh, staff exchange, accreditation, etc. So I think that this will then serve for the purpose of the science, innovation, learning, and knowledge sharing among uh, those countries. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.